On September 4, 1991, Tauri and Randy Barker went to the home of Mark Jones to rob him. Jones knew Tauri and let Tauri and Barker into the home. Tauri pulled a pistol on Jones and Barker handcuffed him. Tauri took valuables from the house and loaded them into Jones's vehicle. Barker took Jones to the bedroom. Tauri told Jones that he was going to give him injections with something that would make him sleep. Tauri then injected Jones with battery acid. Jones was not struggling because he trusted Tauri. Tauri then sought to strangle Jones to death. When the first try failed, he tried again and succeeded. Tauri and Barker then left in Jones's car, unloaded Jones's property at their home, and left the car in a nearby parking lot. On September 5, 1991, Jones's body was discovered. On September 12, 1993, Jones's car was recovered. As a result of a tip given to the Silent Witness program, Tauri and Barker were later arrested. Some of Jones' property was recovered from Tauri's and Barker's homes. Robert Charles Tauri was convicted in Superior Court of first-degree felony murder, armed robbery, first-degree burglary kidnapping, theft, and attempted theft. He was sentenced to death for the murder. Robert Charles Towery did not dispute this conclusion by the trial court. The court found a clear pecuniary gain motive by the defendant in his going to the victim's house, and that financial gain was the impetus for his conduct during the ensuing robbery and killing. A co-defendant stated that they went to this particular house to rob, and once inside, bound the victim while they loaded up the victim's car with a television, photocopy machine, cameras, jewelry, and other items. They also took money and credit cards. Robert Charles Towery injected the victim with battery acid, and then strangled him. Both co-defendants then left in the victim's car and, before abandoning it, removed the compact disc player. The crime took place on September 4, 1991. Towery was running his own mechanic business. One of his clients was Jones, 68, a Paradise Valley philanthropist with a transplanted heart who had lent him money and offered business advice. He was actually quite nice to me, Towery said. Nonetheless, Towery and an accomplice, Randy Barker, planned the robbery and the possible killing of Jones. They took a cab to Jones' house and told Jones they needed to use a phone because their car broke down. Then, they held Jones at gunpoint and ransacked the house. According to the court record and testimony at Towery's clemency hearing, they forced Jones into a bedroom. There, Barker claimed, Towery injected Jones with battery acid, telling him it would make him sleep. Barker claimed that Jones pretended to sleep and that Towery strangled him. Barker was given a 10-year prison sentence in exchange for his testimony against Towery and was released from prison in 2001. Robert Towery spent the first half of his life not thinking and the last half of his life thinking about the thoughtless act that put him on death row. He was 27 that year, an ex-con with a raging methamphetamine addiction. A man he told his attorneys who just reacted to stimuli without reflecting on what he was doing. He did time for running a chop shop. He robbed a restaurant at gunpoint and then planned to rob Mark Jones, an acquaintance who had been kind enough to lend him money. He knew he didn't have to kill Jones, he told the state clemency board. He just did. He put a plastic zip tie around Jones' neck and pulled it tight until he thought Jones was dead. And when he realized Jones was still breathing, he did it again. At his trial, prosecutors claimed Towery tried to inject Jones with acid taken from the car battery with a syringe. 
That's what Tauri's accomplice told investigators, though the theory was not proved at trial and has since been questioned. Tauri admitted at his clemency hearing that he killed Jones, but he didn't remember a syringe. Over the past 20 years, Tauri has thought about the murder and spoken about it. According to his clemency petition, Tauri started drinking at age 6. That same year, he was raped by a male neighbor and wounded by a stray bullet. When he was 8, the petition said, his mother tied him up and made him lie on the floor of the car. When he was 12, it said, his mother made him steal to help support the family. At Tauri's clemency hearing, his two sisters told of the beatings they suffered at the hands of their mother. How she would hang Tauri's bed sheets outside the house so his friends could see he was a bedwetter. When he was 15, his mother threw him out of the house and had him arrested when he sneaked in to take a shower before school. By 17, he was using methamphetamine, barbiturates, marijuana, angel dust, cocaine and LSD. A doctor at his clemency hearing said Tauri was taking enough meth on a daily basis to kill a normal person. At the hearing, however, a clemency board member cut to the point, they hear similar stories in nearly every clemency hearing. She noted that Tauri seemed to be a nice person. But the issue is the crime, she said. Why should we look at you as any different from anyone else? Robert Tauri was executed by lethal injection on Thursday, March 8, 2012 at 1.12 p.m. Robert Tauri, a 47-year-old Mesa man who spent the last two decades of his life on death row, was executed late at the state prison in Florence. Tauri's last-minute appeals didn't pass muster and prison officials injected the inmate with the poisonous chemicals that killed him. His last words were, I would like to apologize to Mark's family and friends for what I did to them. I would like to apologize to my family, Tauri said. So many times in my life I went left when I should have gone right and I went right when I should have gone left. It was mistake after mistake after mistake. Tauri, who lay strapped to a table with a sheet up to his waist, started weeping after he looked at his sister, his nephew and a friend in the room and said, I love my family. Then he took a few heavy breaths and appeared to fall asleep. The execution took nine minutes and Tauri was declared dead at 11. 26 M, following a delay of more than an hour which prison officials attributed to a meeting between Tauri and his attorneys and to difficulty in finding a good vein to inject him. An injection in Tauri's right arm was visible during the execution, but the execution team also injected him in the femoral vein, which is in the groin. It's unclear which injection delivered the fatal dose. Tauri's defense attorney, Dale Beige expressed concern over the difficulty the execution team had with finding a vein and whether it caused Tauri any unnecessary pain. Throughout the execution, his family members wept, sniffled and comforted each other. They declined to speak to reporters afterward. Tauri's last meal consisted of a porterhouse steak with sodded mushrooms, baked potato with butter and sour cream, steamed asparagus, a cup of clam chowder, a soft drink, apple pie with vanilla ice cream and some milk. He became the second man executed in Arizona within the past eight days and the 30th since the death penalty was reinstated there in 1992. He was also the seventh person executed in the United States that year. Thank you for watching Death Row.